Hi everybody, Jeff Landenberg with Align Health EMS Operations Manager. I'm going to talk to you today about cocooning and setting yourself up to be successful with that process. This is just going to be one of many training segments to come in the near future regarding upgraded PPE and equipment that we're putting in the ambulances to assure that you're safe. So let's talk a little bit about the history and why we have personal protection equi equipment regarding hazardous materials or infectious waste. Several years ago, in fact many years ago, we put in hazardous materials equipment. It was either Tyvek suits or any type of a poly or barrier to keep contaminants out of your vehicle. Then there is the emergence of HIV, hepatitis, bed bugs. The stuff's been around forever, but we take it a little bit more serious now. And now we also have Ebola that has made its way to the United States. Any way you look at it, the same body substance isolation and precautions that we've used in previous years still work today, just need to be a little bit more enhanced and a little bit more vigilant. So let's talk a little bit about the tools. Three tools that have always been in the toolbox, which are time, distance, and shielding. First of all, time. Set yourself up for success. Get the right tools out of the toolbox. Get your poly out. Get your, get your hazardous material suits out. Do whatever you need to keep substance and contaminants away from you. Distance. Give yourself a good three to five feet between the patient and you before you actually have any type of body substance isolation on. And then shielding. As we go through the video, we're going to show you the cocooning method and some of the added things that we put in the cocooning pack, but just want you to realize that it can be used for hazardous materials, bed bugs, body substance isolation, and any contaminant or virus that could potentially come off of a patient that could get on you, your equipment, or the truck. So let's take a couple minutes and guide you through the video. Coordinating with your partner, set yourself up for success. Take out the 10 mil poly, which we're going to continue to use. It's a 10 by 10 piece of poly that you drape over the stretcher. We've added an impermeable blue blanket. This will absorb any type of body substance isolation or contaminant. And we're also going to continue to add the wick, which is just a regular bath blanket quadrupled up. As you start to cocoon the patient, cocoon the patient first with the blue blanket and then start to wrap them up in the poly. As you start going through this process, roll the poly in towards itself and have your partner start to duct tape it or use transport tape to keep it secure. As you get through the process, the only thing that should be showing is the patient's face with a face mask on for respiratory protection. Once this is completed, assure the patient is secure to the stretcher using standard operating procedures, using all of your buckles and shoulder straps as you transport the patient to the receiving facility. It is still appropriate to transport the patient to their, their hospital of a choice unless it has to deal with a hazardous materials incident or any type of a required infectious materials receiving facility. Once you arrive at the facility, work with the receiving facility to hand off the patient and assure that any contaminated waste has been disposed of properly.